I am a minimalist living in a maximalist house. Wait, or am I an average person living in a maximalist house? Or maybe I'm a minimalist living in a normal home. <sighs> That's too confusing. I've received a lot of questions from you guys saying that it's almost impossible for you to be a minimalist because you are living with maximalists when there are differences. There ought to be conflicts if we aren't able to understand one another. Whoever this maximalist is, your spouse, parents or kids, I have to agree that there's no way we can keep the house as minimal as you want unless you are staying alone. But speaking from experience, let me tell you that it's possible to be a minimalist even when you're living with a maximalist. I'm staying with my parents. My dad is a bicycle enthusiast, not just cycling. He loves to fix and service old bicycles. And that explains why my house is filled with bikes and tons of servicing tools. My mom, she has no hobby. She doesn't collect anything. But like me, she's not very organized as well. Now, I know where my messiness came from. My brother, he has a business which is bicycle related. So he has lots of tools and stock in the living room, which kind of complements my dad's hobby. That's the reason why it's so difficult for me to film outside of my room without showing you all the clutter. Lastly, my girlfriend. She doesn't stay with me, but she will be here during most of the weekends and she's far from a minimalist. Remember the tab she has on her laptop? atrocious. So, as a minimalist still staying at a maximalist house, let me show you the best way you can survive living with maximalists. Move out. Other than an easy way out, no pun intended, I shall share with you 7 tips on how we can live harmoniously with the maximalist. First, minimalism starts with you. Let go of your perception of minimalism. Some of us felt that being a minimalist means we need to have a spacious house but owning little stuff. Or maybe you can fit everything in your backpack and travel anytime you want. What's important is identify what is minimalism to you. We need to have a purpose and know what we want to gain after letting go of stuff. For example, time, energy or productivity. Those are the things that we should value instead of just emptiness. After knowing the why, that's when we can communicate with the maximalist. Unless they have read about minimalism somewhere. If not, most of our family members and spouse are not aware of this word. They might know the surface level of minimalism and that could be interior design or a certain look. And that's when we come in into the picture to explain everything to them. And let them know that we are trying to live this kind of lifestyle of owning less and removing unnecessary clutter. Let them know why you are doing this and how this will aid you to become the person you want to be. How this will affect them, for example, during gift giving season. Most of our family members will probably be supportive or maybe like mine, they don't really care much about what is this minimalism about as long as it doesn't affect their lifestyle. But what's important during this communication is to inform, not to persuade. I never believe in forcing someone to live a minimalist life. I mean, it did provide me with a lot of values in my life. But that doesn't mean it would do the same to other people. And by forcing it onto someone, they might even develop a negative feelings towards this kind of lifestyle. So the whole point of communicating is not to convert your family or your spouse into minimalists is to let them be aware of what's going on so it's easier for them to understand. And next is be understanding. Whenever we find a new way of living our lives, somehow we believe that that's how everyone should live. We fight our way through conversation just to prove a point. As if the only way to coexist is to eliminate differences. We all have different ways we live our lives and I see it as a blessing because can you imagine the whole world filled with minimalists? That's too boring. Instead of trying to convert someone into a minimalist, why not try to understand them from their perspective? And that's how we can accept each other's differences. We can have our own minimal space and they can have their own hobby corner. Minimalism might be something that changed their life, but it might not be beneficial to them. Similarly, the possessions that bring them value might not bring as much value to us. In fact, we should be appreciative that they have possessions that can bring them value and joy in their life. No doubt, we want them to be happy as well. 
So as much as we want them to respect our minimalist lifestyle, we should respect their way of living their own life. The minimalist came up with this acronym, TARA. It's a four steps approach for us to be more understanding towards people who have different opinion from us. And it goes by tolerate, accept, respect, and lastly, appreciate the differences. I shall not go in depth in the differences, but if you are interested, I have the link down in the description below. Once you let them know about your decluttering issue, <coughs> I mean minimalism, now it's time to have your own personal space. Our living space is still going to be cluttered, but at least we have our personal space to keep it minimal. This can be a space for us to escape when things are too cluttered. You can keep it as minimal as you want as long as it aligns with your value. For me, I'm grateful that I have a room for myself and that's my only private space I can keep it minimal. If you can't have a minimalist bedroom of your own because you're sharing, maybe a certain area of your room can be minimal. Perhaps just a bed area or even a small drawer. It doesn't have to be the things you own. It can be reflected on the things you bring in or how you manage your digital clutter. Remember, minimalism starts with you, not your surroundings. And the best way to show them what's minimalist is by doing it. You never know, that might inspire others to do the same as well. Know your limits. Knowing your limits is fundamental, just like a country's border. Once you cross the line without valid reason, whether is it you decluttering their stuff or they invade your space with clutter, it bounds to cause trouble once you cross the line. I know, looking at a maximalist space, it's so tempting for us to declutter their stuff and yet we have to control this impulse. Other people's possessions are always easier to declutter, but never do it without their permission. Respect their space so they can respect yours. Whenever my girlfriend clutters my space with her stuff, I'll try to be understanding. Maybe, I'll help her keep her stuff as an act of service. I mean, being a nice boyfriend, that's what I should do, but I do it in my messy way. Find your inspiration. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I genuinely believe that the people around you will shape you to the person you will become. I'm not talking about other positive and negative values, but if you want to be inspired and motivated in minimalism, spending time with non-minimalists might not help much. I don't mean don't spend time with them, but you need to find the right resources that pushes you forward towards the life that you want to achieve. For me, whenever I've forgotten that I'm a minimalist or I have certain desires to buy unnecessary stuff, I'll start to watch or listen to minimalism podcasts or video so I can realign myself to what I want to achieve instead of being tempted by desire. And recently, I find myself not needing those enlightenment as much as previously. Once I have any desire, I'll just write it down in my wish list. Most of the time, the impulse will fade. Another thing is, I always want my room to be clean and spacious, even though it's rather small. This is a trick I realized recently. So whenever I want to buy something redundant, I'll watch a video from this YouTube channel, Never Too Small. They have video of tiny minimalist house tour, and these houses always inspire me to keep my room as minimal as possible. It sounds random, but the impulse of me buying something fades right away after I get inspired by those videos. It's fine to be non-minimal. Too much of anything is never good. Too rigid over being a minimalist can be a suffer in this world full of consumerism and choices because we'll easily get affected by things that are out of our control or things that don't align with our values. Similar to Wabi Sabi, there's no such thing as perfect minimalism because there'll always be things that don't align with our minimalism viewpoint. But that doesn't mean that we have to take it too seriously. Always remember, we started minimalism for a reason, not the sake of being empty. Most of the time, this purpose is to have fewer things and distractions so we can provide more resources to others, even to the maximalists, living under the same roof. There are those we care the most and we just want them to be happy as well. Minimalism should be something that brings us closer to the people that we care instead of separating us apart just because of differences. If we see the key goal of minimalism is to own less, then our families are probably doing it wrong. But if we can see it as a way to live our life intentionally, what they choose to do, what they choose to collect, is intentional to them. And what's important is for all of us to understand each other. 
If we can accept their collection and they can respect our minimal space, that's when we can coexist. How do you coexist with minimalist or maximalist? Does anyone even call themselves maximalist? If you are here for the first time, do check out my other videos on this channel. There are videos on minimalism and self-development. If you'd like to support this channel, you can click the like button to help with the algorithm or follow me on my Instagram. I'll keep you guys updated. I have a Patreon page where I have some exclusive content over there and that's where you can support this channel monetarily. And I'm grateful for all the supporters over there. Thanks for watching this and I'll see you guys again next week.